नमस्कार मेरा नाम आशुतोष बहुगुना है और मैं एज ए साइंटिस्ट डी इंडियन कंप्यूटर इमरजेंसी रिस्पांस टीम सर्टिन में कार्यरत हूँ इस सेशन में हम डिस्कस करेंगे वाईफाई थ्रेड्स एंड सिक्योरिटी सो वाईफाई जैसा कि हम सभी जानते हैं सभी यूज करते हैं तो उसमें किस तरह से अटैकर और हैकर उसमें वर्नेबिलिटीज को एक्सप्लोइ कर सकते हैं और कैसे हमें उसको सिक्योर करना है सो लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स आर द वाई फाई सिक्योरिटी चैलेंजेस वट आर द चैलेंजेस अदर देन द ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग चैलेंजेस ऑफ द लाइन नेटवर्क्स वट टाइप ऑफ से थ्रेड्स आर देयर टू वाई फाई नेटवर्क एंड वट आर द सिक्योरिटी बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस वट वी कैन डू टू प्रोटेक्ट द यूजर्स एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फ्रॉम वाई फाई दो थ्रेड्स वाई फाई थ्रेड्स सो वट इज अ वाई फाई Uh, Wi-Fi is the name of a popular wireless networking technology. As you know, we all using this, and uh, this the wireless uh, local area network (WLAN). So the Wi-Fi alliances define Wi-Fi as any wireless local area uh, network products that are based on the IEEE 802.11 standards. so this is defined by the wifi alliance definition of a wifi and we use it on a daily practices we use it for connecting our laptops mobile devices and the uh, tablets so in a wifi uh, what type of a networking can be there there can be a peer to peer networking peer to peer means the computer a is connecting to computer b or a mobile a is connecting to the mobile b so there is a no access point centralized point is not there so peer to peer connections are there and, and the data uh, exchange and data transfer happen over the peer to peer network in infrastructure mode the difference is that now devices are not connected directly to each other they are connected to the access point so network access point wifi access point so they are connecting to that router in a infrastructure mode so what is a challenge uh, that wifi and this wireless networks brings is that network not confined to wires is in a year is someone can even access the those access point from the outside the premises of a organization or the house so if I, if i am using at a wifi network at my home so that may be accessed by someone from the streets also so if it is not properly protected secure and proper passwords are not there so anyone can connect to that wifi network so that's the issue if we discuss about the what type of a challenge is there the open access point open access point means there are access points without username and a without credentials supplying credentials without username and a password so those are the open access points you need not to provide any password to connect to that access point you just connect to that access point that's a problem anyone can connect to that uh, point weak encryption weak encryption means the encryption between device and the access point if it is a weak what can happen someone can sniff the packets and a traffic can capture that traffic and can decrypt and see what you are sending to the network so maybe your password maybe your uh, sensitive information can uh, the attacker can see in secure configuration sometimes we are not configuring the devices properly or our uh, wireless wifi clients properly that may result in a weakness that can be exploited so, so what can, that can be like we are not setting up a strong password in our access point so that's the uh, one of the challenges so vendor default setting sometimes we are using default setting default username password uh, we are not changing that so vendor supply may be the admin admin username password or the test test username password so and uh, the any attacker can guess those username and password and can crack and log in into the your device and then change can do the any damage and the setting viral 
SSIDs. So some SSIDs are the viral. That's not uh, the true SSIDs of any access point. But what it is doing, it's sticking to the computers. So virus, client attack. So there is a possibility of attack on mobile devices and the device connecting to the access point. We will discuss that in how that attack can happen in the coming slides. Denial of service attack. Denial of service attack means the attacker can make the Wi-Fi access point and so the Wi-Fi uh, services unavailable to the legitimate client. So what they can do? They can use a different technique such, such as a jammer. So they can jam that network, they can jam that area or access point so that the legitimate users cannot connect to or access the network. Attacks on Wi-Fi networks. So open and a weak encryption. We'll see what bar driving and war talking and what it means. We'll see wireless crypto attacks. We will see the evil twins, setting up the evil twins attacks, rogue access points. We'll see free public Wi-Fi. Uh, that's not real. That's the viral SSID. We'll see non-SSL web application attacks using a fire seep and we will see the denial of service attacks on the access points. So war driving. War driving is the driving with a very slow speed, let's say 10 km per hour in some certain region and your devices is looking for the access point, Wi-Fi access point. So your devices is identifying access point 1 is not using any password or an encryption. It's an open access point. Access point using weak encryption. So you are collecting, slowly, slowly driving along and collecting all the Wi-Fi Wi related data, Wi-Fi access point related data from that area. So that's the wall driving. Similarly, war walking is there. War walking means when you are walking, carrying a laptop or a device and collecting the access point data details of that region or from the any building premises so that's the war walking then if you identify any open access point so what you can do you can mark there hey here is a open access point hey here is a weak encryption um, access point wep hey here is a WPA2 access point. So that's a chalking, that's a marking. So people can may mark at and trees, roadsides, and anywhere that's known as a war chalking. There is an interesting this service Weagle.net. And if you visit this website, you will find out that what the people use it for. People use it for say you find out the some open access point. So what you can do, you can go to the Weagle.net and mark that access point. Hey, here is a free internet, free open access point. So that's how there are the maps and the people are marking the access points and their status there. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the uh, what people are doing if the access points are not properly protected. Wireless crypto attacks. So crypto attacks means no encryption. Okay. So your device is not using any encryption. That's dangerous. Anybody can read what you are sending to the access point, isn't it? So that's the no encryption. WEP. WEP is a protocol, encryption protocol used to come between device, client device like your mobile phone, tablet and the access point. So this WEP is a dead, dead means it's a broken. So WEP means is equivalent to no encryption because again the attacker can decrypt that. That algorithm, that encryption algorithm is broken and the attacker can read the data communicated by the client device or the access point. There are a WPA and WPA2, latest one. There are a few vulnerabilities and few ways of targeting those also but it's recommended that we have to uh, use in our devices WPA2 latest uh, algorithm of uh, encryption for the protecting the 
wireless network to Wi-Fi network. So, uh, what type of uh, attacks are possible on a WPA, WPA2? There is a recently released, this a crack attacks or a crack vulnerability. This is a key reinstallation attacks on WPA2 protocol. You can go into the details by searching about the crack vulnerability and weakness. Basically, what was happening is the attacker is forcing the access point again set up the uh, key and in that process the attacker was able to get that key. So now the patches and the updates are released by the vendors and the device can be patched. So if your devices are not patched for this weakness vulnerability, so you can patch them. Dictionary based attacks means someone is guessing the password um, uh, key and to try to decrypt that. There are some few cloud-based services also. They claim that they, if you submit to that packet capture there of a wireless network, Wi-Fi network, then it can crack the WPA2, uh, WPA encryption and provide you with the communications between the uh, access point and client machine. Another category we discuss is the evil twins honeypot attacks. So honeypot attacks you uh, is something like that. So suppose your device is uh, looking for a say XYZ access point and uh, or XYZ hotel access point and suppose the attacker set up a malicious access point and says hey my name is XYZ hotel.com XYZ XYZ hotel access points. I am your access point. Connect to me. So, if your device is connected to that network, attacker network, that's the evil twin attacks or a honeypot attack. So, what attacker is doing? Attacker is listening to what your device is requesting for. So, suppose your device is requesting for a access point which you were connected to the earlier, say lab123, that was your access point name. So lab one two three. Now you are not at a lab. You are at your home or some other area where lab one two three is not there. So your device will search for lab one two three network. So attacker will set up and say, "Hey, I am a lab one two three. So your device will connect it to the attacker setup access point. And now the attacker, whatever you will send and communicate, attacker can capture that, can see that. So that's the evil twins honeypot. Rog access points. What's a rog access points? Rog access points means access points which is not authorized by the organization or an owner. So what the attacker can do? They can come into an organization, can connect access point there, and can make their entire network wireless Wi-Fi. So that's the rog access point. So like you see, how the rog access point can come. So suppose there is an employee. He is not aware, but what he is doing, he is connecting to the company network. But his device, his network tablet, his uh, laptop tablet or a mobile phone is acting as a hotspot also. So what is he making? He is making his company network available over the Wi-Fi. So that is the uh, ROG access point. Another is the, the access point, someone enter into your organization, place some ball or say uh, some uh, doll or in a pen drive, save something they inserted into your network, placed into your network, that is transmitting the information to the outside, that is making your network Wi-Fi. So those are the rogue access point. So that's the responsibility of an administrator and an employee also to identify those rogue access point and um, remove them from the network. So, what uh, this ROG access point can lead to, what attacker can do, data leakage, data can be taken out, free internet access is there, scanning for services, vulnerabilities and exploitations. So, from those ROG access point, the attacker can further search within a network, what type of a vulnerabilities are there, what type of, of a net services are there, which can be further exploited. So, session hijacking, fire sleep. So, this fire safe is to demonstrate a vulnerability, that's the HTTP session hijacking attacks and this is an add-on of a Firefox. So, suppose some web application uh, is using 
not using a properly uh, uh, properly protected uh, SSL for the communication. So, what this uh, Fire Seek add-on can do, it can hijack the uh, session when the uh, people are connecting to the access point, especially access point at the airports and the uh, free uh, networks, free Wi-Fi networks. This is the this is a viral access ID. That's the free internet. So viral access ID declaring as a free internet, but there is nothing like a free internet. So the a viral access ID from a uh, an infected wireless uh, enabled computer to another. So uh, what it is doing? It is um, it is spreading from one system to the another system. So what attacker can do? So, if a victim machine is searching for viral SSID, attacker can set up own machine to advertise that SSID. So, SSID like honey uh, pot attack we have seen evil twins in a similar manner. We are looking for viral SSID, attacker can set up that thing and then uh, can listen to all the communication and can control your machine. There are a DOS attacks, uh, denial of service attacks on the uh, networks. The DOS attack on the Wi-Fi network is the what is the simplest way. So unplug the power from access point. So access point no power, so no Wi-Fi network. Jamming the ear jammer, use the jamming device and jam the uh, ear waves. So no Wi-Fi network available. Rogue disassociation, and rogue deauthentication. So attacker is sending deassociation and force deauthentication request to the access point which is then disconnecting the client from the access point. So, and they are doing it on a continuous basis. So, that is the denial of service attack on the networking. So, what are the security best practices uh, for the Wi-Fi? So, first thing is the change default username password in router access point. So, your router access point should be Wi-Fi router or Wi-Fi access point should use a strong password. A credential to log in into or connect to it. It should not be default or a vendor supply or the test test admin admin. Those are the weak and easy to crack. Change default SSID and disable broadcast of SSID. So SSID broadcast and SSID name, name of your Wi-Fi network. You can change that then attacker cannot guess which version, uh, which vendor, which version of softwares, firmware your router is using, which router you are using. So, if suppose it is a of a XYZ company, you are changing that SSID. So, attacker cannot identify which version it is, making it difficult to compromise. Turn off the router when not in use. So, suppose you are not using the Wi-Fi. So, just turn it off. Use WPA to use the strong and updated and patched version of WPA2. And then patch and upgrade your drivers devices and firmwares whenever there is any update available from vendor. User awareness is important. Aware the user, that is the key. Awareness is the key. They should be aware about the security issues and best practices. Disable auto connect features in your devices. So, auto connect features should not be there. Why? Because we discussed the evil twins honey, honey pot attack in which if auto connect is there, your device will automatically connect to that honey pot. So, it should, you should disable it and whenever you want to connect, then only you should connect. There should be password policy. Password should be the, say your policy is the 8 character. It should have a combination of a alphabet and numbers. It should have a special character and things like that. So, you can make that uh, policy. Regular audit of a wireless uh, environment is required if there is any vulnerability, any wrong access point. So, that can be identified in the security audits of a wireless environment, Wi-Fi networks. MAC filtering can be used in some organization. The MAC filtering, the MAC address, the hardware address of the devices is used. So, only the authorized devices can connect to that access point. So, suppose access point is, will be connected from the only 10 devices, in the MAC address is specified in the uh, access point. So, only those devices can connect to that access. So, monitor uh, 
the ear. Finally, monitor the ear means look for any rogue access point um, uh, in your environment, any client kind of trying to connect or any evil twin in your network. So, monitor the uh, ear for the malicious activity. This link available in this science.org reading room. It's a wonderful paper that you can go through. It's a, a secure approach to deploying the wireless network. So, so the author, uh, author is here, Joseph M. Matthews. So, you can go through paper. It's a nice paper. It's uh, gives you the overview of the approaches to deploying the, securely deploying the wireless network. So, the summary of this session is that we discuss the security challenges in a Wi-Fi environment. What type of challenges, issues are there? Then we have seen the some attacks, what type, how the attacker can compromise the Wi-Fi environment, Wi-Fi access point, Wi-Fi clients, how the attacker can exploit and then utilize it for further exploitation within an organization. Then we have discussed the countermeasures and best practices to secure our Wi-Fi network. So that's all uh, for this session. Thank you very much.